Hey, you guys. I'm live. Happy Friday. Let's see who's in the room. I see you guys coming, pouring in. But let's see. Hey, you guys. Speak to me in the uh, live chat. Hello, Black T. Hello, Sharima. Kamiko. Barbara. Aisha. Hello. <laughs> okay, you guys are starting to come in now. Great, 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 great. I finally got some background for you. The background is um, based on today's or this week's article on the hypergamous life about bullies and women who are bullies to other women who are trying to be feminine. Hello, everyone. Hi from Paris. Awesome. One of my favorite cities. Happy Friday, everyone. So I'm going to give the room a few minutes to uh, get it together, to join the chat. Yes, I am so glad I'm covering bullies as well. I get a lot of emails about uh, bullies. Thousand Oaks, California, welcome. Hey everyone, wow, there are 200 of you. I'm gonna wait for a little bit more people to come um, from over at Instagram. Yes, we just started. Thank you, Angela Pickles. Happy Feminine Friday. Thank you for your donation. <laughs> I sound like your best friend. That's awesome. Hello from Detroit. Thank you, Jennifer, for your wonderful uh, comment. Thank you, Satella Noble. Thank you for your thoughts and teachings on being feminine. Thank you very much. Okay, so in a few minutes, we're going to get started. Yes, you guys, and please subscribe for those of you who aren't subscribed. And please hit the like button. Hello from the UK, Roru. Hello from DC, AD Gross. Thank you. Baltimore in the house. Hey, Lola. Hey, from London. I went to London last summer. I stayed in Soho and I had a phenomenal time with my daughter and hubby. Let's see. Hello from Portland. Greetings from Germany. Hello, Seven Black. Hi, Chloe. I will be making a video about hypergamy in February. Well, shout out to you. You're amazing. Much love from Alyssa. Thank you, Alyssa. Okay, so we are going to get started. And today's live, I wanted to talk about uh, mean girls and women who are mean and women who uh, use their masculinity to bully other women who are feminine and women who are um, committed to their feminine elevation. And I wrote an article this week called How to Spot a Masculine Bully because I get a lot of emails and a lot of correspondence from women who are struggling with women who are trying to back them in the corner and women who are being um, cruel and women who are basically bullies. And hello everyone. <laughs> okay, the room's growing. And I wanted to just focus on, um, thank you Villainous Pixie for your donation. Uh, my masculine man is giving me an escape weekend in New York. Thank you, Chloe, for your teachings. You are quite welcome. Uh, hurrah for masculine men. We always love masculine men who provide and who have provider mindsets and who are ambitious. Uh, but to stay on topic, um, how do you deal with a masculine bully? First, you have to know how to spot one. And the first way to spot a masculine bully is to understand that it, it is... Being a mean girl is a spirit. It's just basically uh, something that lives inside of some women, not all women. And <clears throat> this is a spirit that can infect any woman, a white woman, 
a black woman, a mixed woman, a light-skinned woman, a Hispanic woman, an African woman, a West African woman, a South African woman, an East African woman. It is a spirit. And basically, <clears throat> the source of this spirit is insecurity. Um, most women have some levels of insecurity, but sometimes insecurity can be toxic and it can be um, something that people just wish to project on others. So that is the source of a mean girl. A mean girl is basically an insecure woman who hasn't found herself. Uh, but that is not your responsibility as a person who is committed to their own elevation. So um, we spot them by the way they treat us, by the way they look at us, by the way they receive our good news, by the way they respond or ignore um, the positive things that are happening in our lives. And I think the main reason why women are so um, triggered and they get so upset when women uh, mistreat them or disrespect them or devalue them is to a certain degree because we believe that we aren't deserving or worthy of goodness or elevation. Uh, Jay Chris, thank you for your donation on this happy Friday. And um, to stay on topic, uh, it's very important for women who are a part of this community and a part of this channel to understand the source of the reason why they are being mistreated or being treated cruelly, um, and that is insecurity. And always know that that is the source of any negativity that comes in response to um, you making positive changes in your life. So uh, that is the gist of a mean girl. You know, they feel entitled to bully. They feel entitled to control others. They are threatened by elevation and they are fearful of being left behind and they are insecure. And that is the core root of all insecurity. Now, as for solutions, you know, they're pretty easy. Uh, mind the company you keep. Uh, you can always ignore bullies. You can always stay focused on your goals and you can always move in stealth and silence, which is absolutely always recommended. Um, keep your plans and your goals and your dreams very private, protect them and keep them to yourself and learn how to not need the approval of others to move. Um, hey, Jasmine, thank you for your wonderful, generous donation. Uh, hey, Chloe, thank you for all you do. Your videos serve as like daily motivation for me to keep leveling up. Awesome. Uh, keep it going, ladies. This is wonderful. Um, as far as solutions, uh, stay focused on your goals. Um, and if things can get uh, pretty physically violent or you feel unsafe or you feel threatened, you can always get a restraining order and you can always call the authorities. So moving on to your questions, um, let's um, start filling up the chat with some questions. Let's see. My mom has sabotaged my healthy eating. Then, then do not allow your mom to be responsible for what your diet is. You are responsible for healthy eating. Let's see. Hey, girl, hey, we love you. And this is by Stoney Vaughn. Thank you so much. Uh, Mel Stefano, thank you for your donation. Happy Friday. <laughs> that emoji is so cute. Louise Kitongo, I love your videos, Chloe. Much love. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Chloe from Atlanta. Hey. Hi, Chloe from Jamaica. Okay, here's one question. Why do some black men act like black women are the only women who get upset sometime? Uh, well, you can't go by the men on social media. They are a very small modicum and uh, reflection of black men um, who choose to be negative and who want to feel more powerful and bigger than they actually are. Some black men feel that way and some black men don't. I don't like grouping black men together. I don't like hating on black men. Black men can be wonderful when they are providers and protectors and unbelievable fathers. So we don't wanna lump black men, black women into stereotypes, um, fixed stereotypes. That's not really helpful to us. Um, or our community, but there are always going to be bad apples in every crowd. Let's see. Hey, Chloe, what if your bullying stems from your family? Great question. Uh, if you are bullied by your family, 
It is your responsibility to figure out a way to get to safety. Uh, maybe you can get a roommate situation. Maybe you can have a, a family meeting, a discussion or some sort to get to the root of the issues. Maybe you can stay with an extended family member if you don't feel safe. There's always a solution, you guys, for every problem. And I've always wanted to um, hammer that message into all of my followers. There's always a solution for every problem. Never think that uh, no problem is unsolvable. It is always solvable. Let's see. Uh, Chloe, can we get style 101 for the new feminine? Um, style varies. You know, there's so many ways that a woman can be feminine. So it really is up to your personal style. Now, when it comes to uh, practicing hypergamy, however, I will always say stick to being classic and feminine and tasteful. Uh, that means um, pencil skirts. That means flowy dresses. That means... Um, comfortable heels that you can walk in, but still are very stylish. And you guys can always follow me on my Pinterest account at the Hypergamous Life. And you can follow me on Tumblr for feminine visual, uh, feminine uh, inspiration. Let's see. Uh, Jojo Bell, Chloe, I love you and I appreciate your work. You have opened my eyes on how to deal with my future husband, even though I'm still single and not dating but I have the knowledge. You are quite welcome. Okay, Jueli sings the best. Uh, Chloe, thank you for all your help. My mother and I are learning how to vet and keep dusty men away from us. Congratulations, that is wonderful. I'm always excited to hear women who are on this journey with their moms and the women in their families. I think that's phenomenal. That was never an intention of mine. So that is incredible. Mothers, daughters, sisters, aunties, cousins, I think it's Phenomenal when you can find a sister friend, a sister relative to share this journey with. Let's see. Yes, pastels, blazers, clean lines, invest in quality items. Absolutely, invest in quality if you can afford it. Um, always wear, have a crisp white shirt, have your basics, black slacks, uh, let's see, pencil skirt, lots of dresses uh, for enhanced femininity, of course, um, natural makeup, you know, don't, you don't need to look, you know, you don't need to put Duncan Hines on your face basically to look more feminine. Just match your foundation, have a basic makeup, no makeup, everyday look, and, um, always keep your edges in check as well. <laughs> Let's see. Chloe, can you do a video about black women and their daughters and how to deal with jealous mothers? Ah, uh, hmm. Jealous mothers are a thing. Um, I did a video on toxic mothers. Um, to me, you know, jealousy and the bullying is why I really wanted to do this live. So many women struggle with um, women who bully them, including their own mothers. I think it's very sad and devastating that women have to um, feel uh, threatened by their own mothers. Once again, uh, connect to your safety, Keep your uh, plans uh, private, uh, including um, hiding your plans from Mommy Dearest, and get to a place where you can uh, find safety. Let's see. I worked in a warehouse in 2018. The women were fine with me when I was overweight and in baggy clothes. Then I lost the weight and stepped up my game. They bullied me horribly. It was so stressful. Yes, it is very stressful. Um... You know, when you change, you know, I mentioned this in my group, The New Feminine, you know, people change up on you like corners, okay? They turn on you like a corner, and all of a sudden, when you are shining and committed to committed to your bully and uh, your beauty, and you're getting attention, uh, positive attention from men, and you are being courted, uh, that is when the knives come out. So, unfortunately, that is a part of uh, being hypergamous and being feminine and being elevated. If you don't have... Uh, enemies, especially masculine bullies, you are not doing it right. Let's see. My younger sis is Bob the Builder. She knows I do not like it. Yes, but that is her life. She's entitled to live her life the way she wants to, but what she's not entitled to do is to control your life. Uh, jealous co-workers are a thing. Yes, that is the reality. Let's see. Jealous supervisors. Yes, it is a spirit, ladies. 
It can come in a supervisor, a friend, a frenemy, a relative, a mom, a father, an ex-boyfriend. Jealousy uh, is a spirit and it affects a lot of people. Let's see. How can you femininely tell people off when they've wronged you? Uh, when a person has wronged you, I prefer to just mind the hypergamous business that pays me. But there are so many subtle ways. You can just say, you know, I choose to not live in the gutter or I choose to uh, live a life of my best, poss my best possibilities. Or you can say something like, um, you know, it's my life and you should be invested in your own. I don't know. There's so many ways to classy, classily uh, clap back at someone or you can just ignore them. I don't think you have to respond to everyone who wants a response out of you. Um, that is something I've become so... Um, so good at, so trained at, because I've dealt with uh, jealousy and competitive, um, women who are competitive and comparative uh, my entire marriage and pretty much most of my 20s and um, my 30s. As many of you know, I am 37. Let's see. Chloe, if your friends compliment you but also snide snarky comments about you from time to time, does that suggest jealousy or am I being too sensitive? Um, anytime you have friends and they're not making you and you sense, you know, your gut is telling you that they're not uh, in your corner, that they, um, are being competitive with you, just be mindful of it. We don't always have to cut all of our friends off because they display jealousy or competitive energy. We have to be mindful. That's all mindful and protective and to, uh, create healthy boundaries for ourselves so we can know how to move accordingly. Um, everyone's just not going to be there for you and everyone's just not going to mesh. So I think it's very important that you become your own best friend, that you are committed to your journey and your elevation only. And that should really be the only thing that matters. Let's see. I'm learning to pick my battles and not be so passionate when in the workplace. Okay. Thank you, Jojo, for leaving that comment. Can you make a video on the art of nice, nasty, and examples of responses? Um, I'm not really a nice, nasty person, to be honest with you. I'm not committed to that. I'm committed to making my dreams come true and um, getting my goals done. When someone is, I don't have really, I don't really have that many opportunities for people to be nice, nasty to me, because remember, you guys, I don't have a day job. So, um... <laughs> My response to you would be to ignore people. If someone is being uh, nice, nasty with you, why give it any energy? I don't know. I just feel like you have way more success in pissing people off by ignoring them than looking for ways to clap back at them. It just puts you in small world where they already live. You know, you elevate yourself by ignoring people. You know, people hate to be ignored. And I think there's more power in ignoring people than trying to um, uh, clap back with them on their level. You know, that's pretty much what they want. And you're allowing them to win when you're thinking of ways to respond to them. Um, it's just not an empowered way to uh, be feminine. Let's see. Thank you, Chloe. You are welcome, Alexa. Um, whoop, whoop, Chloe is unbothered for the most part. I am unbothered. Um, I'm a human being. Everyone has feelings, but I've worked on my self-esteem and my self-worth enough to know that what people say to me doesn't matter. It's what I respond to. And I teach my daughter the same thing. You know, people will call you everything. They will call you everything you could think of, and they will drag your name through the mud, and they will try to ruin your reputation and make up lies about you. It's not what people call you, ladies. It's what you respond to. Okay. You have been so helpful in my new relationship with letting go of being domineering and allowing my masculine man to take the wheel. After 35 years of being my own protector, it feels amazing. What a wonderful testimony, ladies. Let's see. Hey, Chloe. What about feminine styling 101 for college students? Usually around. Okay, it'll, it'll come back around. This thing is going so fast. My goodness. Jennifer Tate, men, women who claim to be hypergamous yet with dusties. I don't want to be around them because they brag about men who don't produce. Is that wrong of me? No, absolutely not. What is, what is wrong about 
being mindful of the company that you keep. Um, who wants to be around fraudulent people who are faking the funk anyway? I mean, you know, what is the point? Let's see. Hey, Chloe, did you figure out how to make money while being a stay-at-home mom and wife? Uh, not really, because my husband provided for me. So um, one day I will share my marriage story with you guys. But ultimately, I am um, a mom of one. Hopefully, I will be able to have another one before time uh, before the clock ticks out. And um, I'm a mom of one. I've been a stay-at-home mother for a minute and, um, and wife for a minute. And um, that's pretty much it. Let's see. I'd be unbothered I'd be if, if I was a stay-at-home mommy as well. Oh, it's not about being unbothered. I mean, I have in-laws, and I have um, women that are friends. And, you know, there's been some tensions and some, um, some clashes. But for the most part, I've elevated myself above a lot of the friction. Let's see. I feel like I've never been loved in value. What should I do? I feel very sad looking at others being in love. That is actually very common. And um, I don't want to turn it into a cliche, but if you um, want to be in love, you have to start with self-love. You have to start with your self-esteem and your, se your self-worth, and you have to work on it. Um, love is not from the outside in. It's from the inside out. I know sound, I know that sounds very hammy and very cliche, but you, you can only attract the amount of love that you give to yourself, and that is very true. Let's see. Ma'at H., uh, thank you for your donation. I notice women who are hypergamous in my surroundings are not the secrets how to get high by the men like, like they did. When I ask some questions about what they did, they are very quiet. Thank you for dropping these gems. You are welcome. Um, I share as much as I can in the video format. Obviously making a video about different topics can be very restrained, um, restraining and lit and limited. Um, I use my images and I tell a story and hopefully it entertains you guys, but there's so much more you can learn if you join my group, the new feminine, where you can have direct access to me. You can ask me any question and I can help you cohesively put the entire. Okay, I don't know. I see YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Okay, so you guys may be experiencing some buffering. I don't know what's going on. Okay, did the chat end? I don't even know. Let's see. Hey, you guys, can you still hear me? I'm not even sure. Let's see. No, I'm getting, let's see, getting. Oh, okay, I see. The connection was almost lost. Yes. Uh, listen, you guys, I'm new to this, so let's see. Uh, let's start with another question. Uh, is being physically handicapped and feminine possible? Absolutely. Um, what would stop a woman from being feminine, no matter whether she was on crutches or in the wheelchair? Femininity is a spirit. It is an energy, uh, that you exude and that you practice and that you share with others and has nothing to do with a disability. Of course, you have to be cognitive. You have to have cognitive reasoning and processing, but everything else would never stop you from being a feminine person. Okay. Now what's coming in? really fast. Okay. Bizarre. Let's see. Chloe can't hear anything. Okay. Single mom here. I walk around with a stroller a lot in nice neighborhoods. I dress well and do my face and hair. This thing is moving so fast. Okay. Here we go. Chloe, is this normal? My mom doesn't want me to get married. She doesn't want me to have children. She just wants me to focus on my career. I've gotten away from her and I'm becoming a woman. No, that is not normal. Um, you should see a mental health therapist for any deep rooted issues that you have with mommy dearest. You guys, if you are having a really, have had a really difficult relationship with your mom, um, where your mom could possibly be narcissistic or 
um, mentally ill, please see a mental health professional. Those are deep rooted issues that affect your self-esteem and your self-worth and they need to be uh, discussed and they need to be stretched out so you can figure out how to move forward. If not, you will remain stuck or you will just um, try to put a Band-Aid or over a wound and that Band-Aid would be femininity and hypergamy. Um, I am an advocate of healing and growing in your healing, ladies. So that is definitely my approach. Uh, let's see. Your mom is a hater, get away. Yes, she's more than a hater. She's probably really suffering um, mentally and emotionally. Let's see. You know, Chloe, can you slow down the chat on your end? I'm trying to figure out this whole uh, live thing, you uh, ladies. So bear with me. Let's see. Yeah, my mother and I relationship is so bad. It is actually quite uh, common for women to have uh, really damaging relationships with their mothers. Um, we don't talk about it enough in the black community because the black community, mothers are given a gold star for just existing. But actually, mothers can cause a lot of damage to their daughters, uh, their daughter's self-esteem, and their daughter's sense of worth. Um, and it uh, deserves to be explored definitely more in the black community. What do we do if we can't afford the therapist? Uh, find a counselor. Find someone to talk to. Uh, find a church, someone in the church or someone to speak to. This is not an issue that you can deal with on your own. You can also uh, journal. You can uh, go to the library and get healing books, spiritual books. I recommend a lot of Ian Levanzant books. She's terrific if you cannot afford a therapist. But eventually, uh, I, re I recommend seeing a professional specific to um, issues in the black community or black culture um, who's just or just a therapist who is culturally sensitive. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Clip tips on how to stop obsessive thoughts about a past relationship. I'm a university student and I'm becoming more hypergamous after a relationship with a bipolar man. That is actually a great question. Um, how to get over an ex. Um, I would say that time heals everything, but in the meantime, there are things that you can do. I personally recommend having a good cry uh, after a, a recent breakup. A lot of women try to play tough and they try to tough it out and they try to act like, you know, they weren't hurt or they don't have feelings. But, you know, that is how you lose your vulnerability. So you need to um, create a safe space for yourself where you can cry it out Um Think about the things that went wrong and how you're just going to do, do it differently the next time. Um, processing your emotions is a very valuable thing to do in femininity and hypergamy. If you are trying to be hypergamous without processing your feelings, it will come off as mechanical and men will smell it a mile away. So you've got to um, just figure out what went wrong and to never repeat it again. That is what relationships are for, to learn the lesson. Okay, how to join your private group. You guys, you have to email me, thehypergamouslife at gmail.com, and I will send you a link once payment is made. Let's see. Uh, it makes me sad when people can't afford one. This is more motivation to get my PhD. Absolutely. Um, we need more mental health professionals, so absolutely. Absolutely. So sad. My mother is my best friend. I know it is very sad. Um, my mom is my best friend as well. Can a woman still be ambitious with goals and the things she is passionate about along with still being hypergamous? It's okay. Well, I got part of the question and can a woman be ambitious? Absolutely. She can be ambitious, but it is highly recommended, and I, I know you guys have heard this on many channels and many situations. If you are uh, successful and ambitious and driven, if you are a driven woman, um, you but you want to live hypergamously, you must date someone who is at your level or higher. Now, obviously, the higher you are in your ambition Hey, Marlena Riley, thank you. Hi, Chloe, I appreciate your content. It has helped me renew my mind on a lot of things. I still have a lot to learn, 
but I am unlearning a lot of unfeminine behaviors. Uh, thank you for your donation, Marlena Riley. Um, but to finish the answer to the question, <laughs> Quiana, Monique, thank you so much for your donation. Chloe, please do a video on single mothers in hypergamy. I'd like to know your view on the subject. Thanks. Um, I want to do a video on single mothers. Um, the negativity, however, I'm not too keen on. Um, I would say for single mothers, there's definitely more than one way to be um, a single mother. You can be a single mother because you made a poor choice. You could be a single mother because you're divorced. You can be a single mother because your life partner uh, died in an accident. There's so many ways to be a single mother. Um, as I said in my first live, if you are a single mother, the only difference is you have to get a babysitter. You have to get someone that you trust to watch your kids. And you cannot over rely on relatives to watch your kids to live hypergamously. And another way to become more hypergamous as a single mom is to join dating apps. It will save you a lot of time on uh, being able to meet the right people. Now, if you're going to be freestyling, you know, your kids will slow that up because you don't have the freedom to go out and just meet and mingle with people and get comfortable in your dating skin. So my recommendation to single mothers is to get a quality babysitter, uh, vet properly so that you don't attract men who are uh, molesters and abusers and men who are seeking to uh, exploit your situation because you are perceived as weak and alone and without uh, manly protection. Let's see. Hi, Chloe, random, but what do you think of the song Miss Independent by Neo? Um, I don't know. I think a lot of people uh, want to bash and destroy music because, um, but music is just a form of entertainment. I really don't take it that seriously. It can be a great song if you want to enjoy the song. I don't have anything, anything against Neo. Um, I personally do not practice music. Um, uh, leading with my independence. I am a hypergamous woman by nature through and through. And so, you know, not my cup of tea, but it's not a bad song. You know, let's see. Chloe, how should I tell a man? I have a son. He's nine. I'm a single mom. His dad is not in the picture at all. Well, it depends on, um, have you vetted this man? Um, are you dating this man seriously? Um, Single mothers should not introduce random men to their children without highly vetting them. So if this person is a serious um, suitor, then possibly just tell them, I have a son. You know, it's really not that complicated. A man who is willing to date you and accept you will accept your children. And that's just the short of it. Let's see. What about mothers who use their faith to constantly get to you? praying for your downfall, blaming you for your bad things in life. That is an abusive person. Recognize that person as an abusive person. Anyone who uses religion or some type of, you know, woo-woo energy to, to bash you or to pray or for your downfall is a person who is praying for their own downfall. They're just not aware of it yet. Let's see. Some men will try to exploit you if they believe you need their help as a single mother. Level up and don't be dependent or needy. Yes, there are a lot of men, especially for you single mothers who are listening, who are predators, who are predatory uh, towards your situation, and you have to be very mindful. Um, I know that single mothers feel that they are punished for are being moms and not having partners. You don't have to feel punished. You don't have to feel like you are suffering, but you do have to accept that your situation is different from women who are single and who are without children. And you will attract men, uh, low value men, probably more than the average woman because men are always, low value men are always looking for easy situations to exploit and being a single mother, unfortunately, is one of those situations. That's why your vetting skills have to be uh, champion-like, okay? I like her videos already. I like her even better live. Thank you very much, Trinity. Um, hi, Chloe, 27 years old and married. What did you do before you bring, bef uh, before 
being a wife and mom as far as school and work, much love. Um, before I got married, I had, um, I went to college. <laughs> I went to NYU. I was a student at NYU. And then I got my master's degree in education. And I taught, um, I was a classroom teacher for two years. And then I got married and my husband told, told me to quit. <laughs> and that's that. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, men with money, are they extremely cheap? It depends on the man. Video idea. How to recognize a high quality man. Ladies, uh, do your research. A high quality man is gainfully employed. A high value man is, has a provider mindset. A high value man uh, shows respect to women and is not misogynistic. That is the quality of a high value man. Let's see. Dating in your 20s, I don't want to be married. That for 30s, any advice? Not really sure about that question. Ladies, please mind your questions before you enter them. Some of them are not decipherable. Let's see. Hey, Chloe, can you touch on narcissism and criticism on your looks from men? Yes, narcissism. I was just talking about that in my group. Um, a very serious mental health issue. Uh, narcissism and criticism go hand in hand. Once again, um, I will say it again. Uh, people who criticize, who are overly critical and are overly uh, bullying are insecure people. That is why you ignore them because they are coming from a place of feeling shattered and broken. They are not um, kind because they're not even kind to themselves. So let's see. Please talk about Megan and Harry. Um. <laughs> Wow, that's a whole another live. Uh, Jay Chris, dating a guy uh, that has his life in order, he asked me to be his girlfriend within a month of dating. What is your take on this? Take it slow. If you don't trust it, take it slow. And by the way, thank you for your donation, Jay Chris. But take it slow. Get to know each other better. If he has a life, his life in order, you know, just, you know, this is that's what courting is for. It's called dating, just getting to know someone. If he asked you to be his girlfriend within a month, um, I would need more details, you know, but do you feel safe? Do you feel respected? Those are the guidelines that a woman should go by. Um, let's see. Y'all got to stop being pressed about a man's money. That is what narc used to reel people in. Of course, he should have money. That is the basic foundation. Okay, not all narcs have money. Just to let you guys know, <laughs> there are some really uh, broke narcissists out there they are very broke and they are very controlling and entitled and they are bullies and they prey on women who have low self-esteem and low self-worth so not all narcissists have money and not all men with money are narcissistic in nature hey chloe i work from home full time and i'm having a hard time being feminine just sitting at a desk all day any advice Yes, get dressed up, put your clothes on, get feminine, go to a coffee shop. Put your makeup on, get your hair done, put in a ponytail, look cute, and go to a coffee shop. Or go to a bookstore. Anywhere, or go to the library, anywhere where you can work from home, where you can extend your work and um, show up. You know, uh, femininity is a vibration and a frequency, and you have to practice it. Uh, Dom Dom. Thank you for your donation. Could you reiterate why looks are so important? I wasn't raised like that, so I'm not sure of the benefits and how it helped me. Helps me. Um, well, you can listen to my video, Why Looks Matter. I feel like I really went in depth with, with that video. And looks matter because men are visual. And men are attracted to femininity and feminine energy. And the best way to exude that, ladies, is to look feminine and to visually um, uh, enhance your femininity through makeup, through hair, through the way you walk, through body language. There's so many ways you can be uh, a feminine woman. It's very important to men because it is, it's the balance. It's the yin to the yang. Men are masculine and women are feminine and together we are very powerful. Let's see. Men are visual. Looks get you into the door. Yes, snatched life. I totally agree. Hi, Chloe. Chloe, I've been uh, trying to trying out the dating app on Facebook. I've talked to a few guys, nice guys, 
but it's hard to find a guy that is consistent and wants to be in a long-term relationship. Any tips? You just have to, honestly, I feel like online dating can be very tricky. If you are struggling with online dating, I would definitely say start freestyling. Start going to places where high value men are. Three, four star restaurants, hotel lobbies, five star hotel lobbies. Get dressed up. Start going out with your girlfriends just to free, freestyle and get a feel of what men are attracted to. You've got to put yourself in the places, ladies, where men with money are. How long after your master's did you get married? Uh, I got married, let's see. I would say a year before I got my master's, I got married. Maybe six months, somewhere around that time. Let's see. Hi, Chloe. Can you look at my question in the super chat? I haven't seen your question. Okay. Okay, let's see. I ended my engagement. He wasn't helping financially or emotionally. I was talking on the house bills, taking on the house bills. Will I own it? And groceries. He was manipulative. How can I affect, attract someone who has his own by making it a standard? <laughs> By not dating men who are dusties. That's why I keep talking about dusties on my channel all the time. Because you ladies need to develop standards. You need to see it and recognize it when, when it's coming your way. If a man has no is not gainfully employed. If a man has an attitude or a mindset that his woman should help him pay for his life. Or pay for life together. Then that is not a good fit for you. If you do not want to go 50-50. Uh, Courtney Tran. Thank you for your donation, Courtney. Is it possible to pay for a super chat to gain entry into the Facebook group? I'm sorry, I'm lazy. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, if you want to get into the group, you have to email me and you have to pay the fee, just like every other woman who's in the group. And you'll be a part of our vibrant, thriving community. It's really awesome. Uh, let's see. Chloe, are you dark skin? No, I am not dark skin. I mentioned on my channel, I'm a little bit lighter than Michelle Obama. Hi, Chloe. Can you please dedicate a video about changing the dynamics? If already in a relationship, when it might be too late to change the dynamics? Um, hmm. I could make a video about that. If you are in a relationship with a man and you are in a 50-50 situation, understand that that man expects you to be who you presented yourself to be. You cannot switch things up and change things up on men and tell them to be something that they're not. You cannot make them become something that they aren't. Um, usually if your man is not a provider or doesn't have a provider mindset, he will not want to provide for you two years, three years, four years, five years in. The only way to get men to respond to you is to stop having sex with them. Then maybe you can probably have a conversation with them about... Uh, your unhappiness or the direction that the relationship is changing or your desire to be more provided for it. See how he responds. Most men will not respond favorably, especially if you've been helping them pay bills and spit resp uh, excuse me, split responsibilities. So uh, unfortunately, there's not much steering of the ship that you can do in a dynamic that is uh, usually already fixed. So um if you don't want to be in that relationship anymore, stop having sex with them, start saving your money, and be prepared for the, ine the, inevitable, the inevitable, which is uh, usually a breakup. Uh, let's see. Save the lives, someone. It will be saved. Mm, exactly. Why does her skin tone matter? It matters. It definitely matters. And just for the record, you guys, I love all black women. All women, all, women's, uh, all women of all shades. Um, I don't have an issue with women who are mixed with black. Um, I don't have an issue with dark women, light women. Um, I treat women as spirits. That is my main focus. I, tr I treat women as a spirit. And if your spirit is kind and open and welcoming and loving and generous and helpful and um, accepting and you are willing to grow and you are willing to evolve, then you're my kind of woman. All right, let's see. Oh my God, I love you. I love you too. Chloe, would you say it is okay to be taken out on a date with a gentleman from my office? We work for the same company, but not the same team. If he asks you out, 
I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, is he in a higher position than yourself? Is he at the same level as you? I would not date anyone who is on the same level as I am. I'm only going to date the boss or someone who is um, way higher in the, my pay grade than I am. But that's what I would do. Let's see. Flipping the 50-50 isn't possible for a man that don't got it. Absolutely. Listen, ladies, if he doesn't have the money to be a provider for you, he doesn't have it. And this is why we don't date Dusties because Dusties usually don't have it. And a lot of women try to turn these men into kings, into providers. And this is where vetting comes in. You have to be able to put yourself in a position where you are dating a man who has at minimum a provider mindset uh, matched with ambition and drive, which is very necessary for men to become successful. Uh, Tim Hedson, I'm celibate and dark skin, long hair, any dating advice? Um, become more feminine. That's the only thing you can do. Um, ladies, being dark skin is not a liability. Um, I know we live in a world of colorism and I know we live in a world where uh, darker women bear the brunt of colorism and negative um, uh, promotion. But as a dark skinned woman, you are beautiful to me. Um, are you beautiful to black men? It depends on whether they're brainwashed or not. But there are black men who would love you and accept you for your dark, beautiful skin, your long hair. And there are black men who would bash you. And there are white men who would do the same. Um, I think it's all about finding someone who's just not brainwashed and finding someone who will love you and appreciate the beautiful dark skin that you were blessed with. I think melanated skin is some of the most gorgeous skin in the world. We know that ladies. So yes, being dark is a privilege. Um, we cannot care what people say about dark skin women being ugly. Those are ignorant, uh, <laughs> ignorant, woefully ignorant ignorant people who prey on the insecurities of women, uh, dark skinned women. So, uh, but we're at a place now where that conversation is so played out, not colorism, just this idea that dark skin is ugly. Like anybody who speaks that way sounds played out and just lost. So let's see if you're attractive, you're attractive period. That is true, but there are nuances in colorism that are wonderfully addressed um, by Chrissy, by mainly by Chrissy, but definitely um, a necessary um, topic to for women to 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 um, be cognizant of, especially when they are of a darker tone. Let's see, I'm celibate as well. I don't lead with my celibacy. I only tell men I am celibate after I see he has a provider mindset and I see a possible future with him. That is a awesome comment. Thank you, Jasmine. I date outside of my race. Yes, you can date outside of your race. You can date in your race. You can date whoever you want. I prefer to date hypergamously and I recommend it to women. We are blessed to have these videos. Thanks so much. You are quite welcome. Yes, I see dark skinned women with high caliber men all the time. I live in New York City. You see them all the time together in Brooklyn. There are plenty of beautiful dark skinned women and average dark skinned women who are with men who are not broke, who are have good jobs, who are providers. And um, there are men out there. I believe there are men out there for dark skinned women. He may not look like a dark skinned king or he may be a brainwashed black man, but he's not a man for anyone. They claim dark women ugly, but always trying to bed them. Yeah, okay, we believe you. Absolutely. Dusty men will say anything to get into any shade of any woman's drawers. Okay, let's see. Date hypergamously. Absolutely, that is what this channel is all about. Uh, being dark skin is a gift. So many beautiful dark skin female ladies practicing hypergamy. Melanie Hobson is my favorite. Absolutely. Look at Jody Turner Smith. Absolutely. Who was phenomenal, by the way, in Queen Slim? I know many, many of you did not see Queen and Slim. Queen and Slim. I thought it was a great film. 
Why do you think hypergamy is confused for gold digging? Because hypergamy and gold digging are shaming tactics used by broke men and dust bunnies. Hi, Chloe. Love your content and advice. Thank you, Linda Kamara, for your comment. Only broke men call women gold diggers. Dusty, dusty, dust bunnies call women gold diggers as well. <laughs> the term dusty still slays me. Yes, it is a very t funny term. How did you grow your channel so successfully? That is a great question. Thank you, V Edge, for your question. Honestly, I just, I just got online and I just communicated authentically. I, I, I speak of what I know. I speak of what I've experienced. Um, I have a lot of sisters, so I know women pretty well. I know that um, at the root for all women, all women want a chance at love, uh, to have someone to care, to so have someone provide for them and care for them. And I just figured it was very important for women to understand um, how to better see themselves as feminine women, as powerful women, especially because, uh, particularly with black women, we are so engineered to be, to work against ourselves uh, by being masculine and by being very um, opposing to men. When men are a great gift, some types of men, of course, uh, men are a great gift uh, in terms of relationships and fulfillment in our lives. And, um, and it's just not spoken about enough. So I wanted to start a channel based on that, and it just kind of took off. Authentic advice brings in a crowd. Thank you, Shan Jor TV, for your comment. Can you go back to an ex who was un unfaithful but wants a second chance and wants to provide? My ex cheated on me and now wants to be together, saying he's changed and I can quit my job and he will provide. Well, listen, Mecca, minor, thank you for your comment. Actions speak louder than words, um, but I am of the school of thought that exes are an ex for a reason. So examine why the relationship didn't work out to begin with. If it was based on the fact that he never provided, I just doubt, I'm very doubtful that he, ch he changed his mind all of a sudden, but you'll never know. If you give him a chance to prove himself and prove that he's a provider, you know, I hope it works out for you. Thank you for your advice, Nyasha Lee, Nyasha Lee. Uh, you are welcome, Nyasha. Let's see. Like they call people names like nigga, B-Y-T-H, and gold digger. It means nothing. They are trying to make you feel less. Be happy to dig gold. Absolutely. Why pay attention to shaming tactics? Shaming tactics, you know, who cares about those? Are you happy? Are you getting money? Are you getting money from men? Are you being seductive? Are you being feminine? Are you um, thriving? Are you being courted? Are you being flattered and impressed? Those are the things that you should be focusing on, not what negative people have to say. There are always going to be people who speak negatively and who try to downplay others and who try to uh, chop your tree down. They exist to make you better. I actually love it when I have haters because it just makes me better. And you should love it as well. They are a sign that you are moving in the right direction, which is elevation. Dig for platinum. Absolutely, Cherie Vernier. Thank you very much for your comment. How did you learn so much about a master hypergamy? I learned it mainly from my relationship experiences, uh, the relationship uh, with my husband. I learned it from a lot of reading, a lot of studying. Um, I did my research on the feminine arts, which is what I always recommend to those of you who are listening. Just type in feminine arts in the Google search bar and it will come up a plethora of information on how to be more feminine, how to conduct, conduct yourself as a feminine woman will come up. Do your research, ladies. And the reason why I say do your research is not because I don't want to help you. It's because uh, femininity is not one size fits all ladies. Uh, you have to do what works for you. We all, um, all of you women, there are 944 women in the room. All of you have a different childhood, a different background, a different mindset, a different personality, a different body type, and you have to do your research so you can know 
um, your research in the feminine arts so, so you can know what works best for you. I think a lot of women have a cut and paste mentality when it comes to developing themselves and you have to know what works for you as a feminine woman for your personality, for your temperament, for your body type, for your height, for the type of men that you are attracted to. This is why doing your research is key in being successful as a hypergamous and a feminine woman. Chloe, you are so inspiring. Uh, Sumaya said, thank you, Sumaya. How old are you, Chloe, if you don't mind me asking? I am 37, uh, Jakia. Chloe, what do you mean by feminine arts? I mean by squad, and that comment is by Suad Felicity. I study the feminine arts. It means study anything related to femininity and enhancing your feminine uh, divine and enhancing your feminine presence and enhancing how you engage with men. That is the feminine arts. It works with your confidence, your self-esteem, your self-worth, your wisdom. Do you want to be a goddess? Do you want to just be a feminine woman? Do you just want to have a successful relationship with men? Do you want to just better communicate with men? That is the feminine arts. It is a science, ladies. Let's see. How do I find new girlfriends that are like-minded? I've let go of my masculine buddy, bullies. You are welcome to join the new feminine for women who are like-minded or any other group that focuses on femininity. You are welcome to a start a group through their websites. So you can start your own group. Um, there are so many ways to find like-minded women. women. You can go to events, you know, with feminine women. Let's see. But I always recommend that you enjoy your own company before you look for the company of other women. You have to like yourself, ladies. That is very important. Let's see. Any books on femininity? Yes, I recommend The Art of Seduction as a first recommended read for any woman who is interested on learning growing her femininity from the inside out femininity and seduction go hand in hand i thought it was a book on the feminine arts no there is not one book on the feminine arts there are many books uh, on the feminine arts there are many books on gold digging there are many books on how to be more feminine there are more many uh, books on femininity and relationships you just have to pick out the book that's right for you Okay, try using the Meetup app. Absolutely, I, I knew that's what it was, Meetup. You can start a Meetup group if you are interested in um, being communal with feminine women in your community. <laughs> I want to be a stay-at-home mom. We'll make it your goal. So, so, Lydia. Enjoying your own company is so true. So ladies, um, we have two minutes before I end this live chat. Thank you for all of you who joined in. Uh, let's see. As a 26 year old who is used to the bad boy type, how can I get out of that? What functions should I attend? Um, first, work on your femininity, work on your look, get your look all the way together from head to toe, Deandra A. And I want to also say, if you are used to the bad boy type, stop dating them. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my God, I listened to the Art of Seductions via audiobook. That is awesome, Nyasha Lee. Do you think most men who provide cheat? Should that be expected? <laughs> All men cheat, broke and paid. You'd rather be cheated on by someone who's paid. Now, obviously, all men do not cheat. It depends on the character of the man. And just because a person cheats does not make them a bad person. It, how, it makes them a disrespectful person, but that doesn't make them a bad person. Cheating is not a deal breaker for women as much as women think that it is. But you would much rather be cheated on by a person who has the ability to provide for you or someone you can get money out of in a divorce than someone who's broke. Bye, Chloe. Have a great day. Yes, you too. Thank you so much. Appreciate all of your content. Thank you so much for your donation, MM. 
Let's see. Hello, Chloe. I do not have a problem meeting wealthy men and getting wine and dime. My problem is them providing. I don't know if it's because I am too put together, but it's so difficult for me. Okay. You can either contact me and join the new feminine, or you can do your research and try to figure out what you're not doing right. I really need more context, ladies, in order to help you solve uh, or to address some of your very, very specific questions. Okay, uh, squad, Felicity, uh, for you, how to seduce without chasing like a man. How to seduce, have great photos, <laughs> know how to become seductive, read the art of seduction, um, search seduction in Google, and learn how to be more seductive with men. Uh, that is what draws men in. That is what keeps men interested in you, ladies. You have to learn how to be seductive and sensual and feminine and you just have to know how to stroke a man's ego, his very fragile ego, to learn how you how to get what you want out of men. Uh, Andy Gross, uh, thank you for your donation. Thank you, Chloe, for all of your feminine wisdom. And that is the best way to end this live chat. Thank you so much, Andy, for your uh, donation. So, you guys, I'm going to try to go live more often when I find the time. A lot of my free time is spent with... Uh, my hubby and taking care of my daughter. So I try to keep uh, my best to uh, stay on this channel and to make the videos and to just help you guys as much as I can. Um, I just want to remind you guys that tailor made advice is very hard to give without context. So I know you guys have a lot of specific questions that you need answered, but I need more context. I need to know. <laughs> you know, more about your partner and more about your childhood and more about your life to really, really get to the nitty gritty of how to help you. And that is where my consult consultation comes into play. And that is where my group, the new feminine comes into play as well. Um, how do I get provided for without begging <laughs> by looking good? And um, Chloe, I love you. Thank you so much for all of the info and videos. Have a great weekend. And you guys have a great w weekend as well. And I'm going to end the stream. And I'm going to try to get a video out for you on Sunday. I'm not sure. But if not, have a great weekend, ladies. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.